I'm very glad to be here with you today. This is an amazing day. I am blown away by all the amazing applications that we from these amazing teams. Uh, I am super stoked. I am uh, left speechless by so many of them, and I'm super excited to try them out. Um, I this is going to be an amazing year, uh, and you can already see it from the cohort today. Uh, the demos from the, this amazing group um, and the applications that they're building, the businesses that, that they're starting, uh, and you can just see how those will grow uh, into larger and larger things and how those will also help seed next generation things. Uh, this is a, a an amazing time in crypto networks when the ecosystem starts booming. Um, and what you can expect uh, from this year is that that boom will continue and grow um, throughout the uh, uh, throughout the whole year. So if you're a developer, uh, now is a great time to get involved in the network. Now is a great time to learn about uh, the network. Now is a great time to learn how to build things, to participate in hackathons, uh, and to get going. And if you are uh, thinking of building a business, uh, this is also a fantastic time. There's a lot of uh, parties helping support uh, new groups like Tachyon with this accelerator, and there are others uh, to come. So in this year, as a developer, you can uh, start learning. You can build your things through hackathons. You can launch uh, your things and then later on uh, go on to grow them. Uh, in this cohort uh, that is presenting today, many of the applications that we see started off uh, at the Hackathon Hackathon. Some of them participated in the Apollo program. Uh, some of them they're presenting now as part of Falcon Launchpad, and some of them will likely go on to uh, raise funding in the future. So this is a a, a the beginning of a whole ecosystem that will generate a lot of different kinds of uh, startups and new projects and so on. And what's amazing is that you can think of this whole year uh, as having many different opportunities for this uh, to go on. So uh, one of the things you can count on is that there will be many hackathons this year. There will be accelerator programs and there will always be grants and investors uh, uh, to help fuel uh, teams to uh, to build the future. So this is a great time to get started, great time to build. Uh, and a great time to uh, build the future of Web3. So what I wanted to do today is just give some of the builders uh, some ideas. So if you're uh, out there in the audience and you you just are, have been blown away by, the, by these teams and are thinking, wow, uh, this is really cool. I, I really want to kind of, kind of go and build my own thing. Um, then maybe this, uh, this section can give you, I can see some ideas for you um, and maybe uh, might be a, the topic for, uh, for some hackathon. Uh, so the first thing I wanted to uh, remind everyone of is remember that the network is an economy together. So there are all these different participants that are coming together to build uh, a whole ecosystem and economy that provides uh, cloud storage services and provides a platform upon which to build uh, larger scale applications. And so one of the interesting sets of ideas that you might take away from this is you can think of each one of these constituent groups and think about the tools that they need. Uh, think of the, these parties as needing uh, certain kinds of things to work better and faster and so on. So you can do a lot of re user research here to figure out uh, some of the things that, that may not work as well for them. Um, and you can kind of find an entry point to, to provide some value. So for example, with miners, which are uh, you know, a huge ecosystem now, a um, lot of participants, there's all kinds of things that they would like to um, be able to do better and so on. And maybe several businesses can be built just uh, helping and serving miners. Uh, so anyway, some ideas uh, that I'll give to kind of each of these groups. I'm sure that there are a lot of people in the audience that are um, uh, that are part of these different groups. So for miners, um, hey, just keep growing capacity, keep storing people's files, uh, help bring clients to Filecoin, um, and then perhaps expand to other countries. For developers, uh, you know, start off by uh, learning the stack and dev tools. Build, try building some consumer-oriented apps. So I think now. Uh, with a storage networks like Filecoin, you can now start building consumer apps that uh, can rival Web2 apps uh, and try building this out, shipping them and, and see how it goes. Uh, you can start uh, playing around with video in, in, in new ways. Uh, you can think about building tools and services for other application developers. You can think of bridging to other chains and building uh, yeah, connection bridges and, and different kinds of um, ways of combining Filecoin and providing storage uh, to, to applications and smart contracts in, in other chains. And you can think of building DeFi apps that, um, that provide um, better systems for uh, managing the economics of, of different groups like miners uh, and so on. Uh, then when you think about if you're a client out there, um, now's a great time to learn an experiment, to try storing your data with Filecoin, um, 
try using some of the applications uh, that are out there. You saw a bunch of them today. Uh, so I encourage you to try them out and, and try storing your data and so on. Uh, and you know, integrate applications uh, that you might have uh, built with, with Flatline. Now, here are some, some interesting ideas for resource providers. Technically, or most people don't think of these groups as being part of the ecosystem, but they are the foundation upon which all which all miners rest on, and therefore all of the, the rest of the network. So think about hard drives as, as, and uh, GPUs and so on as critical to uh, the Falcon economy. And think about uh, selling those resources directly in Falcon. Uh, that'll help the Falcon economy, it'll help the entire network, and it'll, it'll boost the activity of miners and so on. So you can also think about creating discounts for, for miners. You can think of uh, investing in some of the mining companies themselves. Uh, and you can also start designing hardware specific for Falcon miners. So um, one of the big important parts of the uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum uh, mining booms uh, is that over time, uh, hardware started being optimized uh, precisely for those purposes. Uh, so we'll likely see um, different kind of hardware setups being uh, being developed that will kind of optimize the uh, uh, Falcon storage and delivery. Uh, and one interesting thing is, you know, in a whole, you know, in the crypto economy, uh, you can buy a lot of things, but sometimes you, it's, you know, if you want to live your life with uh, cryptocurrency, uh, you also need to be able to pay rent and buy food and so on. Uh, now, uh, in 2021, you can actually do this with many cryptocurrencies. You can now actually buy food and use it as a medium of exchange for for everyday goods. Uh, so you need to plug in Pathway into those into those rails, those payment rails, and now people can uh, participants in the economy can be um, fully part of like the the Falcon network and Falcon economy. Now, if you're a token holder, uh, here's a set of interesting ideas. You can think about lending Falcon to miners and lending Falcon to clients and developers. You can think of investing in some of these groups. You can invest in mining companies. You can support ecosystems, um, support the ecosystem with grants, and you can uh, think about supporting app developers. Uh, probably don't want to lend Falcon to shorters. Uh, now's not not a good time for that. Um, but maybe I recommend something instead. Try um, try doing this this kind of a completing the loop of the economy. Uh, and invest in Filecoin, uh, invest in companies with Filecoin, and maybe if the food payment rails have been set up, then maybe those startups can actually migrate all of their activity uh, into Filecoin, and that will kind of boost the, boost the economy. Uh, so this, uh, I'm really thankful uh, and, and super excited for, for the first funds that are, that are developing uh, and launching into, into the ecosystem. Uh, so huge kudos to Fanbushi, Huabi, and a few others that are, uh, that are coming up. Uh, so this will be uh, an exciting first uh, and second quarters and uh, rest of the year. And uh, if you're just a, a part of the community and um, don't quite fit in, in one of those groups that are really excited about the network, uh, hey, just spread the uh, spread the word. Uh, tell other people about Falcoin, maybe ho host conferences and events, host hackathons, um, host community summits, contribute on Slack and GitHub, host developer meetups, and so on. All of that kind of... Um, engagement and energy and, and activity uh, really helps to uh, build a stronger community, build a stronger economy, um, and make everything better. So one of the big things that, uh, that made uh, great communities like the Ethereum community successful uh, were so many of those uh, important conferences and hackathons and meetups. So as uh, we come out of this uh, really terrible pandemic, um, especially if you're in a country where, where this is no longer much of a problem, um, then, then uh, start uh, bringing people together or bring people together in uh, in virtual spaces like this one. Um, so I'm going to give now some more ideas to, to app developers and builders. Uh, and I'm going to kind of go fast through through some of these. Uh, first off, most of the hackathons that have, that have happened and will happen uh, usually make lists of ideas. So you can always mine those. Uh, there's one for Hackathons. Uh, there's usually one for every single ETH Global Hackathon. So check those out. Um, and there's a lot of other ideas out there. So if you're hunting for ideas, uh, read those. Uh, there's a lot of really cool stuff. And I think, in fact, some of the um, participants that, that demo today, uh, I think some of those ideas are actually listed here. So uh, as I mentioned, it is time to start building really high quality product, um, uh, high quality consumer oriented products. Uh, so try your hand at that. And you can start get started with the Slate framework. So the builders of Slate also created an entire framework to make it easy for you to, to plug in pieces and build a high quality UX. So maybe learn that structure and, and learn how to build your idea um, on site. Uh, you can think of uh, building applications that combine high, really high quality photography 
with uh, these networks. So one of the most important um, use cases for computing in, in history has been uh, taking and editing and sharing photography. So this is maybe it's time for photos to come to Web3. Um, and you can probably get started with uh, open access archives, uh, Creative Commons archives. I believe Flickr is still uh, Creative Commons licensed. And so you can you know, start with data sets like that and pull them into the network and start using them in, in interesting ways. You can think of uh, creating galleries or, or creating applications with them um, or potentially uh, create a, a way for people to share their, their, um, their photos privately and securely with, with the people they care about without having to kind of put them into um, centralized uh, kind of data monopoly companies. Uh, maybe uh, this will be the year where we get some Web3 social apps. Uh, that would be pretty exciting. So uh, there's a lot of uh, challenges to solve here in, in representing these kinds of um, systems and building these kinds of applications, especially if you want them to scale to billions of users. Um, but maybe it's the time to get started in building a bunch of these components, getting the first um, forums to work and so on. Like, for example, uh, people could totally make uh, something like a, like a Redis system now. Um, and have that work on, on top of Falcoin. Uh, and you know, maybe if, if you get it to uh, scale to thousands, tens of thousands of users uh, over time as that growth happens, um, the challenges to scale to billions will be um, will be figured out and solved. Uh, you can, uh, as I mentioned earlier, you can think of building bridges to all these other uh, blockchains and uh, build uh, storage rails for um, backing up uh, data from, from these, uh, these networks. Uh, you can think of, uh, so early in Ethereum, in Ethereum's history, people were, got really excited about the possibility of build, being able to do stock photo and video archives uh, with, um, with cryptocurrency. Uh, but the big hurdle was you couldn't really store the photos anywhere and it was kind of really cumbersome and so on. But hey, maybe, maybe it's time for those ideas to, uh, to really happen. Uh, it's especially critical because I believe that a, a number of these uh, stock photography websites actually charge a huge fraction of the royalties. Uh, and so it develop, uh, the, the actual artists that go and create a lot of the, the amazing um, video and photos uh, take a, a very small share of, the, of their work, uh, of, the, of the revenue from their work. Uh, so maybe it's time for decentralizing that, that industry. Uh, developer assets are a huge fraction of the data storage in the network. Uh, and so perhaps looking at a, at a lot of these systems and thinking of ways to, uh, to improve them with, uh, with things like IPFS and Podcoin. Uh, might be really, really valuable. So for example, um, distributing data and package managers or containers, so building kind of a Docker Hub type of thing on top of IPFS and on top of Falcon, like that would be potentially really, really cool. Uh, you can think of building open access science platforms. You can think of storing all of the different uh, artifacts uh, for the long term in a, a uh, decentralized network where uh, you can count on the data being there long term and you can count on anybody being able to contribute to storing it. Uh, but one of the cool things that uh, you can go beyond and you can not just store all the assets that are the outputs of the company of the science, but you can actually start doing the science directly in networks like these. Um, you can start, think of being able to do a bunch of the data analysis directly on uh, on Filecoin. So think of shipping all the data sets and storing them long term uh, in Filecoin and then being able to ship your computation uh, to where the data sets are and do the computation there. Uh, it's a really cool project uh, that's doing this, uh, that uh, um, is doing this with machine learning data sets. Uh, so definitely check it out. And uh, kind of what, why does this make sense? Well, uh, there's think you can think of uh, a Falcon Miner uh, system as having, uh, you know, a tons of storage, think of like one to 100 petabytes in, in some cases. Uh, and you can think of them having a lot of GPUs for doing the proofs. Uh, but they're not running all the time. And especially since they already have kind of a, a pipeline for, for GPUs, uh, then if your computation requires a, a GPU, so it can be GPU accelerated, then this could be a, a phenomenal computational class for, for you and for your application. Um, so you can think of building, taking kind of the, the kind of Jupyter notebooks uh, and maybe observable scientific tooling and building a platform for researchers directly on top of Falcoin where, um, hey, you accumulate really high quality open access data sets over time, and then make it super easy to run any computation on top of that. Um, and miners can uh, get an extra source of revenue by uh, paying for the, uh, getting paid for the computation. Uh, and of course, you know, uh, networks like LifePeer and Golem are, um, are already doing a lot of this. 
And you can think of uh, just coupling those networks to Falcon Miners. So for example, Falcon Miners could be participating in these, in these networks as well. Uh, so I wanted to introduce a, an idea that I think is pretty interesting, which is uh, the idea of building data commons or data DAOs directly on Falcon. Uh, so today, uh, if you want to share a resource, um, uh, if you're a community that cares about some data and you want to uh, store it in some place, you usually have to find one party, nominate them to kind of be the, the keepers of the data, send all the data to them, and then they maintain and provide uh, the services. They store them somewhere in the cloud. They um, work on on maintaining and on upkeep. They work on um, getting updates from all the community members and so on. And so most of the data commons that have been built out there and most of the uh, uh, shared resources that have been uh, created usually have some kind of organization that is the steward of the data. But with Falco, and you can now, well, so first with IPFS, you can now collaborate directly instead of having to um, move all of your activity through that intermediary, uh, you now can start collaborating directly and maybe uh, anybody could be kind of replicate the whole the whole snapshot. Uh, but now with, with Falcoin, then the community can contribute to a persistent long-term archive. And uh, nobody has to maintain it directly. Uh, the community can maintain it together. Um, the, the community could get access controls figured out and uh, be able to add and, and remove uh, entries from this, this collection uh, and also pay for the long-term survival of that, that data. So think of being able to build um, you know, data DAOs or data co-ops uh, where there's dynamic membership, uh, people don't have to worry about maintaining servers and so on. Uh, they can share the payment costs and they can curate some really valuable data set in the long term. I'm reminded of so many online communities that share a bunch of static assets like images or game patches or all kinds of things um, that have to store things in, in random servers and the community members come and go. And it's always really hard to figure out who's going to maintain the stuff next. Uh, but all of that can just be, be uh, placed on, on Falcon and then um, uh, maintained in the long term. Uh, and then you can think of building a network of such of such data commons. I mean, they're all uh, will be sort of connected uh, through the chain. Uh, and you can think of uh, maybe some of these might be composable, some of these might be uh, interrelated in, in interesting ways. And then you can think of uh, couple that, the, coupling that to smart contracts on Ethereum and other chains and um, and potentially data markets like Ocean and so on. So, so I think this idea of building, um, taking so community data sets and community resources, building a data commons out of it and structuring the economic data flows, uh, structuring the economic flows along with the data flows um, is an extremely interesting uh, idea that will we'll probably get developed over the next year or two. Uh, still very early. I think we're still seeing the beginning of this, um, but over time, this will be uh, a pretty interesting thing. Um, you can also start thinking potentially uh, upgrading and building some of some crypto native video platforms. So uh, there are things like DTube and out there and so on that, that already do some part of this, um, but they, you know, they have to store and back up their video somewhere, usually in a centralized cloud. But now, with, now that Falcon is here, all of that video can be moved um, over, over to Falcon. And what I would really love to see is some kind of live streaming kind of thing, especially with, you know, think of combining um, social features like, um, like all kinds of reactions and NFTs and, and, and crypto payments and whatnot. Um, and so having like a, like a Twitch like uh, experience, but with crypto, I think would be super, super fun. And uh, uh, music uh, is already uh, out there in, in, in a strong way. So you can look at audio and there are other applications that are building um, uh, the next generation of music on web three. Uh, but now think of building other kinds of applications that use these, um, these data sets. So, you could go and build another application that uses all of the audio's uh, music data set and does something really interesting with it. Um, so you could, it could be a different player or it could be um, maybe a, a, a social DJ style app or uh, maybe an environment, a VR environment that you jump in and listen to music with your friends or something like that. Uh, and you can just use all of the data that's already, uh, already in the network. Uh, NFTs, I think, are, are an amazing, amazing, uh, creative space, uh, you can think of pushing all of this artwork and maintaining it in the long term um, in, in a place like like Falcon, especially the assets that are bigger, which are harder to, to uh, keep around. So think of large 3D models and video and so on, um, being building collections, NFT collections for the long term um, will be really, really cool. And of course, games. So static assets are pretty big. Think of all of the infrastructure that you have to maintain as a game developer or a game 
game publisher. I think of being able to kind of do away with all of that by putting, um, pushing all of it into, uh, into Falcon and, and the Web3 cloud. Uh, I'm especially hopeful that some of these open source games that, that were out there that uh, um, are super high quality, but maybe didn't get like huge distribution because they weren't, weren't part of like some big app store or big publisher um, could explore an, a different pathway uh, with maybe some of the, with, with kind of multiplayer in an environment where people can um, start owning parts of the world and interacting in kind of like a met metaverse style way. Uh, and that'll add a whole new dimensions to, to uh, the, all of these gaming worlds. And that might be, will be a totally new economy uh, for within games and for game developers. So I'm super excited about that kind of thing. And so if, if you're, uh, I think we're starting to see the beginning of games on, on Web3, uh, this will probably just heat up it through this year and next year. And games are pretty related to virtual worlds. Uh, there's a lot of really cool activity happening in uh, crypto voxels and Decentraland. These are really cool environments that actually manifest the, the you know, age old idea of being able to um, create virtual worlds in computers and computers and so on and kind of jump into cyberspace and have your own uh, location and be part of a virtual city and so on. Uh, if you haven't seen these, definitely check these out. So it's a great time to bring all of these things to, to the Falcon Network. Um, and experiment with building more. I mean, it, it'll be um, pretty nice and, and, and easy over time to um, stake out some some space in in the network and build out your your um, your parcel and, and so on and keep it for the long term. And uh, if you're a fan of games and virtual worlds, and you're probably also a fan of VR, uh, VR has really large assets assets that need to be distributed and kept in the long term. Uh, so again, Falcon may be a great fit for this. Um, and if you haven't been getting into VR, I highly recommend it. I think this year, um, the all of the technology is finally getting there. And so I would be a huge fan of seeing uh, hacks this year that combine uh, VR and Falcon. Uh, and the last thing I'll leave you with is that um, it seems that now we're finally ready. We have the primitives and the components to build the metaverse. So we can uh, start building the frontiers of this by uh, thinking of of the existing platforms and the existing games that create these social experiences um, and these worlds that people have invested so much time building, um, and think of stitching them together into some uh, some environment and some world where you can move between them and you can maybe um, transact in some common ways. Uh, and so this is similar to the data DAO problem. Uh, a lot of these things think of keeping the, the uh, all of the state for these worlds as maintaining a collection together. Um, and so I think if we start putting, making it easy to move a lot of these worlds and backing them up in, in, uh, in Falcon, then over time, uh, these things can be stitched together and, and, and be part of the same sort of software distribution. And eventually we, we kind of build the metaverse piece by piece. Uh, so it's going to be a pretty exciting, uh, year. Uh, I hope that, uh, I've given you some ideas to, on um, things to build. Again, I am super thrilled for. Uh, the teams presented today, I am blown away by by all of the exciting things that they've been building, and I can't wait for, to see what they do next. Congratulations, folks.